Hey everybody, welcome to the Harland Highway Podcast. Before we get going, I just want to remind you guys, uh, please subscribe to the uh, Harland Highway Podcast. Tell your friends to subscribe. Uh, Press the little bell. That way you get notified every time uh, yours truly posts something new. And uh, let's have some fun. Enough chit-chat. Roll the cameras. Put some ice on your face. Smash your sister in the head with a bag of jelly beans. Here we go. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's time. It's time, boys and girls, men and women. Mutants, freaks, peanut allergy people, uh, corn on the cob people, uh, giants, giant people, seven feet plus, uh, garlic bread lovers, everybody gather round, gather round and let's ride. We're going down the Harland Highway podcast right here, the only place you really need to be. Um, so uh, welcome, everybody. What a, uh, what a show. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. And uh, let me just clear the side of my eye because we don't want a, a clunky, crinkled up side eye. If we're going to do this, we we don't want anything happening with the side of that eye. We want it to be El Presento, El Primo, El Prompo, El Segundo. Um, So let's start with uh, something that is a truth. Sometimes truth in today's society is hard to uh, come to terms with hard to confront and again I'm, I'm when I you know that's a, that's a that's a, a serious word a serious term so if I slip into a sultry sort of clean Eastwood sort of facade when I do that it's 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 hard to confront um, but I'm going to talk about some truth right now, and I think it's a truth we've all confronted. It's a confronted. I think it's something uh, we've all had to do, and I finally kind of just stepped up to the mat and dealt with it because it's something maybe I've been avoiding for a long, long time, as I think all of you have. I, I might be the only one in the world, okay? I'm going to be very bold and say in the world, who's actually done this, who's outed this truth, who's confronted it, and I'm hoping it starts a cavalcade of followers. I hope that I'm the Pied Piper skipping down the street in my green leotards and my curly elf shoes and a feather in my cap and all you mice and rats and lemmings and sea otters and baby walruses, whatever kind of creature you are, I hope you waddle or crawl or slither down the street behind me because I am the Pied Piper of truth right now. Mm -hmm, Now that's right. And here's what happened. Uh, It starts with three letters. KFC. I think you know it. I'm not playing any games. This isn't a word teaser. I think we know what KFC is. If you're from other countries and you're watching, because I know I have a lot of viewers in uh, deep, deep Russia, I know you're watching me, Glad, or Vlad, or whatever your name is. I know you're sitting on a snowbank, probably waiting for some Siberian tigers to come. And you're on your cell phone in the freezing temperatures, watching the Harland Highway podcast right now. But that's okay. You might not know what a KFC is. But KFC... To those of you in other regions of this vast sphere we live on, it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. And this is where we come to the story about truth. 
And that's a big word. It's a tough word. I want you all to take a moment here. Just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to silence everything for about 10 seconds. And I want you to ask yourself the question, are you in with the truth? Are you an honest person? Are you someone who can ask yourself honest questions and be ready for honest answers? whether they be traumatic answers, whether they be uplifting answers, whether they be revealing, damning. Yes, and that that word I also, damning answers is for, you know, what it implies, but it also, as I mentioned on the fringe, I have Russian viewers, I have people in some of the darkest jungles of Africa. I have viewers everywhere, but when I say damning, and I'm an all-inclusive person here at the Harland Highway, I want you to know, and I hope this doesn't disturb some of you viewers, I also have some beaver, beaver viewers. And when I throw in the word damning, that's kind of a little nod and a, you know, a little beaver tooth, buck tooth grin. To my beaver friends, Ye- folks, ho- hold on. Let me divert from the KFC truth for a minute. Folks, beavers build lodges, okay? Birds build nests. They're out in the open. Foxes go into dirty dens, the holes they find, and they've got probably a, an, an ex-gopher hole where gophers were in there having prairie dog sex and eating mozzarella cheese sticks and sniffing each other's uh, purple ass asses. And uh, beavers build lodges. Now, to, to take the word lodge, that is, that is a word from the architectural digest. You don't go to architect school and say, I think I'll design a swallow's nest. Or uh, I, think I'll, uh, I think I'll construct a den. No, no. But you will find, oh my goodness, look at this fabulous lodge nestled in the Swiss Alps. So lodge, as you can see, as it pertains to our vocabulary and as it sits in our vernacular, which is also a heart disease, Um, Lodge is a very refined uh, structure. And beavers have the wherewithal and the intelligence above most other creatures, hairy creatures with rotten yellow buck teeth, to uh, build a lodge. They build a lodge. And where I'm going with this is if you have the wherewithal to build a lodge... You're not in the lodge just to lay around on some soggy sticks, eat some bulrush fronds, and do water bubble farts. I mean, bro, if you build a lodge, you're in there. There's probably like a rack of elk antlers. This is a lodge. There's probably, could be a disco light, one of those round silver disco lights. You, you go in a beaver lodge, it's like sparkling. It's like running around in one of Jesus' farts. I mean, there's probably a couple of mini bars. I'm guessing there's some shag carpet. Um, definitely some velvet paintings of some, some exotic Polynesian island girls with no tops on and, and red orchids in their hair. Are you kidding me? We're talking about lodges here, gang. Okay? The only mammal on the planet next to us, Homo sapien, that builds a lodge. And not only do they build a lodge, think of a a human-engineered lodge, just for a minute. And we'll get back to the KFC. Hold on to your fucking termite mounds. The human lodges rest on terrestrial ground. They are on the upper strata of the Earth's surface, okay? Okay, to build a lodge, maybe a three-, four-story ski lodge, a feat in itself not for the faint of heart to construct a beautiful lodge. And for some reason, I'm turning into Captain James T. Kirk. Um, but take, take the, and I, I don't want to say this, but take the lowly beaver. 
that soggy, seaweed stinking, rat looking, fart bubble sniffing. <laughs> I mean, these things are like giant water rats that just got their faces stuffed at the Golden Corral buffet or something, right? I mean, the giant yellow teeth, they, these things chew through trees. And so they are capable of en- an engineering feat that even uh, us humans, who boast to be the smartest of the pecking chain, uh, the beaver actually builds its lodge on water with an underground water chamber or tunnel, if you will, that comes up into the lodge. So you enter the beaver lodge by swimming underwater and coming up inside the party house or the lodge or whatever you want to call it, the disco. I call it the dirty buck tooth rat disco because you know they're in there disco dancing. I mean, you know, they're encased in a lodge. They got water. You'd know those hairy golden tooth rat freaks are in there. Get down, boogie, oogie, oogie. Get down, boogie, oogie, oogie. Right? And they're, some of the drunk ones are over in the corner chewing on birch bark twigs and, you know, probably hammering down a, a, a red pine branch. You know, just addicted. Rat, gr- greasy, water rat. Flat pancake tailed monkey shines, fucking diarrhea stained, fucking mongo rats. And I'm sorry, beavers. And I know that here's my point they're watching right now, the same way the Russians are watching in the hills, they are sitting in the snow banks. The clever beaver is smart enough to be sitting in his lodge watching the Harland Highway right now. And so when I throw in a few terms, that are beaver friendly, like damning. Now you know why. I have audiences and demographics that I have to cater to, that I have to please, and gang, cut me some slack. If you were doing the Harland Highway, everything I just said, you would have said. Per Batum, per Jason Bateman, per, per, per Bateman, per Jason Bateman. Um, so there you go. Um, but let's get back to, um, KFC because this is where the truth happened. And, uh, you know, we've all walked into a KFC. We've all gone in and made the order and you get the bucket or you get the, the family fun pack or you get the nuggledy nuggets or the, the three piece combo. Even though there's only one of you, you get a three piece. Combo, please. Um, and you, you make your order, and you go to your car, or you go to your uh, Mack truck if you're a trucker. I know there's a lot of truckers out there on the highway listening and watching, and this is for you. <laughs> and that was an extra long one because I know it sexually arouses truck drivers not that i want to sexually arouse them but they deserve sexual arousal i I wasn't i'm not doing a thing to be the object of their sexual arousal but i know that it's like a pavlovian dog thing when when pavlov's dog heard a, a bell it would salivate because Pavlov rang the bell every time he gave his dog food. And so the dog, by association, when he heard the bell, whether it was food there or not, would begin to salivate because of the association. And so although I am not sexual with truck drivers, never have been. Don't care if you, if you got an 18-wheeler or a three-quarter ton, a Peterbilt, uh, a Mack. I don't care if you're hauling raisins from here to Bakersfield. I don't care if you're hauling onions through the Rocky Mountains of uh, Colorado. 
Uh, you're not bending me over a uh, Coca-Cola machine at the uh, Shell station out on Route 29. Uh-uh, guy. But I do know that it gets lonely on the road, and we're going to get back to the KFC thing, I promise. I know it gets lonely out on the long highway. You're hauling. Maybe you got some furniture in the back of your rig. Maybe you got uh, wheelchairs. Maybe you got fresh produce back there in the rig and you're humming down Route 309 through the cornfields of uh, Oklahoma. And it's nothing but highway. It's nothing but dotted lines and, and antelopes, pronghorn antelopes. And some of you know what those are. Prong, it's the only American antelope, by the way. And I'm not going to go out off on a tangent on on pronghorn antelopes the way I did with the beaver thing. But I will say this, pronghorn is a very weird term. Many of you haven't heard it. If you want to look it up, pronghorn antelope, the only American antelope, has these weird little um, antlers or horns that kind of bend backwards and look like bottle openers. And so truckers, and I hate to say it, sometimes go out of their way to hit them because they can they can open a, a bud or they can open a corona right on the dead mammal hoofed mammal's head. And it's sad, but you know, all I'm saying is truck drivers have sexual needs like the rest of us and if if that noise, if that prolonged air horn can give them a little tingle, help them get through the drive, help them get home to their family without pulling over at a Motel 6 or a Red Roof Inn and soliciting a prostitute. If that noise can get their sexual fantasies and they can ride on the fumes of that all the way to your local grocery store and get you your fresh produce, then shame on you people for not going when you see a truck driver. Now, can we please get back to KFC? First, I need a little sip of Wendy's. Mm. By the way, Wendy... Or Pippi Longstocking. Or Molly Ringwald. I don't know. I can't, I, who is this? This doesn't look, this looks a hell of a lot like Pippi Longstocking. Have you ever seen her? The little Swiss, freckle-faced, red-headed, pony bobby tail, whatever these things are. Ponytail, Swiss, creepy, pale skin. I don't know. I think uh, Wendy's Corp, and that's uh, short for corporation, might have uh, commandeered, shall we say. I don't want any copyright litigation, but they may have just commandeered uh, old Pippi and uh, hoard her out as a burger slinger. And when I say hoard her out, I mean whore, like in, like in what the truck drivers are doing up on Route 29, just south of uh, Fresno. You know what I mean, guys. <laughs> right? But this, they took a Swiss icon, Pippi, little Pippi long stockings with her freckled face, and who knows how many freckles she has on her ass. I mean, that, there's been rumors that astronomers at... <laughs> let's just say nudist colonies for the family have observed various constellations on the little Swiss kid's ass, Pippi Longstocking, because it's so freckly. One of them wrote a dissertion in a science journal uh, about uh, witnessing the Big Dipper colliding with Orion's belt when uh, Pippi was doing some tricks on a trampoline and her ass cheeks smashed together at the nudist colony. So when, when universes collide, and again, I mustn't leave out our friend Molly Ringwald, the iconic actress uh, from such movies as 16 Candles, uh, Pretty in Pink, 
um, a night at the wax museum, um, Hannibal Lecter's Christmas fun pack or whatever. I don't know what movie she was in, but have we ever seen Pippi Longstocking, Molly Ringwald, and Wendy in the same room? I say we haven't. I think Wendy the hamburger slut, Molly Ringwald, and Pippi Longstocking are the same damn person. Prove me wrong. Huh? Prove me wrong. Go to Switzerland. Look for a girl eating a square cheeseburger. And she's being chased by autograph hounds. You won't see it. Because that's Pippi. That's Ringwald. And that's Wendy rolled into one. And I'm going to get back to the KFC story. Don't, pu- don't push me around. Don't, don't send me your stink eye. Hey, dude, we signed up for the, pip, the uh, KFC story, and so far it's been all about beavers and truck drivers and antelopes and, you know, whores in small towns at the Red Roof Inn covered with B- Mrs. Butterworth syrup and thumbtacks? Wait, did I tell that story? No. But let's go back to KFC. We've all walked into KFC, and we walk up, and we place our order. We look at this stupid thing like we're looking up at the moon. Oh, you ever see those people that just take way too long? Like they've never been in a McDonald's before. They've never been in a Burger King. They've never been in a KFC. They've never been at a movie theater snack stop where they, you know, they have these big, shiny, bright lights with not only the names of their products, but big seductive pictures, photographs, a Big Mac four feet high, a bucket of golden popcorn seven feet high, a a, a dripping wet sexually aroused glass of Coca-Cola, just moisture dripping down like it just watched three porno movies and sucked a fucking rhubarb out of the back of fucking... Paris Hilton's fucking motorhome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Holy shit. But you get these people that look like they just walked out of an electroshock therapy session. Maybe a lumberjack came up and smacked them in the temple with a with a canoe paddle. Maybe they, they, they just like licked their finger and shoved it into a blender and got electrocuted. Maybe they were just... Uh, doing laps in, in the uh, heavy water outside of the uh, Three Mile Island nuclear plant. Just, you know, doing backstrokes through the, the heavy water. You know, the heavy water that the manatees enjoy. You know what I mean, you manatee lovers. You know about the heavy water. The manatees, yeah. They sneak into the, you know, nuclear power plants, ladies and gentlemen, discharge something called heavy water. They eject warm, gooey, heavy water into, uh, into the, uh, the oceans and it attracts something else that's heavy. It's almost fitting. Manatees, the fat sea cows of the sea, they are attracted to this warm water as are other marine animals and, and critters. And they swim around in this this uh, this water that's ejected from uh, nuclear power plants, and uh, this is a fairly new phenomenon. But that's going to come around and bite us eventually. Eventually, we are going to uh, pay the piper on that one when we have, you know, w- woolly uh, tusked manatees roaming the earth, nuclear infused uh, alligator garfish crocodiles uh, playing the bagpipes who knows what nuclear waste creates what is with people and now i'm jerry seinfeld what is with people standing in restaurants and at the movie theater looking up at the menu don't they already know what's on the menu 
Haven't they been coming to McDonald's their whole life since they were little kids? And by the way, how many items does McDonald's have? They only have like six hamburgers. How do you not know what you want when you're standing? Right? But that's my point. How do you not know what you want? Why do people stand there and just, uh, let's, uh, uh, what is that a, what, what's a Big Mac? Is that like a uh, quarter pounder with cheese? How much does that weigh exactly? Uh, sir, it's a quarter pound. Okay, but doesn't the cheese throw it off a little? Like, isn't it like a quarter pound with cheese, sir? Quarter pounder with cheese. Okay. Okay, so my point is enough with you stunned menu zombies. You can't use up any more of us good people, us articulate people that understand a wall menu, know what's on it, rarely ever need it, really. Most of us who have been doing the fast food and movie theater uh, tour our whole lives can pretty much just walk in and go, yeah, could I have a medium popcorn and a uh, small Coke and uh, how about some licorice? Thanks. Did you see how fast that was? Versus... The wall menu zombie who looks like it's their first time out of the institution or the house. Uh, well, so let me, if I get a, a popcorn and a drink, that's not a popcorn and a drink. It turns into a combo. That's, that doesn't sound like a food. So anyways, you're standing there at KFC. And you see the thing, or you already know it by memory, what you want. And you order your food. You order your deep fried chicken with how many herbs and spices? That's right. That's right. Eleven. Eleven herbs and spices. Did you, do, do we even know there are that many herbs and spices? Do do most of us lay people who don't know how to cook, who don't know anything about ingredients, we just ingest, uh, just, uh, you know, carte blanche, we'll, we'll, someone put something, we don't know spices and herbs. And KFC has 11? Is there any other food? I, I've never been to McDonald's. Enjoy the new Big Mac with nine herbs and spices. Fuck me. I don't think there's one herb and one spice in a Big Mac, a Whopper, a Wendy's Square Burger, a Chick-fil-A. Uh-uh, man. Uh Uh-uh. So if you want herbs and spices in your diet, you get your ass to KFC, boy. Oh, you get your ass to KFC, boy. I'm going to come down there in my police cruiser and throw you in the back. I'm going to hit you around the head with some freshly picked celery. Mm-hmm, that's right. The crispy kind that stings. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack you right across the side of your face with some freshly picked celery now, child. Oh, it's going to crack real hard, real hard, real nice. It's going to snap on the side of your face now, child. So anyways, we are back in KFC. Boy, am I getting distracted today. And I blame you. I blame you, the viewer, because look at you. Look at your eyes. Oh, God, look at your seductive eyes. I look into your eyes, and can you blame me for not concentrating, for not focusing? Look at your freaking gorgeous eyes. Wow. You guys just take me into dream world, man. It's amazing I can complete a sentence. You're dreamy, drifty, billowy clouds, stars shooting across the galaxy eyes. I might as well go out and uh, fucking stuff my face in an ant nest and uh, barf up uh, some, I don't know, marshmallows? What are people barfing up these days? I don't know. So anyways, for fuck, we are... We are... We are standing in front of... Thank you. We are... 
We, thank you. We are standing in front of KFC. We're inside. We're, thank you. I know, hilarious. We are inside of KFC, and um, I know, hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, enough. We're standing in front of KFC and honesty. And you heard it from Billy Joel. It, it's such a dangerous word. Honesty is such a dangerous word. Is that how it went? Who cares about Billy Joel? I'm trying to tell a KFC... Billy Joel, a guy with the roundest eyes you've ever seen. They look like ball bearings with corneas in them. Like if Billy Joel ever got drunk and he's one of those buddies or he was in a house fire and you thought you had to lift him and help him or carry him home because he was, he was too drunk to walk. No. Here's a guy you lay down on his stomach. You grab his ankles. You lift him up. You hold him by his ankles. His face is now on the pavement and his giant ping pong sized eyeballs are actually sitting. They're so big, they're sitting on the pavement. And you literally roll this fucking Emmy winning pop star home. You roll Billy Joel wherever you want, like 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 a like a fridge on wheels. This guy's eyes, they're huge. He's like Garfield the cat with a with a 1970s perm. You just roll, roll me around on the piano, man. My eyes are bugging all night. Yes, I look like a dragonfly that's just seen a ghost. Cause my eyes are blowing out of sight. Ah, la, 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 la. Get me some visine and an eyedropper. Oh, roll me on my eyes. I'm a fucker. Anyway, KFC. KF. KFC, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Do you see what's happening here, folks? What's happening is I am demonstrating that the truth is hard to get to. I started this confrontation with the truth probably if i look at my imaginary watch that isn't even there from apple uh i think we're maybe 17 minutes in and i'm guessing i oh my god i just looked at my time we're 33 minutes in (laughs) we're 33 minutes into the kfc true story and i haven't even breached most of it and breaching is something a whale... Did. No, I'm not going to go there. Um, wow, okay. So I guess what I'm saying, and I just said, is the truth can be hard to get to. And we're certainly having a run at it right now. Um, but KFC, you go in, you order your food, and this is what I did the other day. I finally confronted the truth, okay? Okay. I walked in. I didn't even look at the wall menu. I know what I wanted. I walked up to the kids working behind the counter. He had the red and white striped KFC uniform on. Sort of looked like a prisoner from a gay prison or something. It was like pink and red and stripes and looked like he should be out, uh, you know, on a chain gang, uh, maybe picking tulips or something. But I walk up to this kid, you know, he's got the silver braces and zits all over his face and the little KFC hat. And he's got a lisp, of course. He said, can I help you here? I said, what? Can I help you here? And I go, bro, what the fuck are you saying? And I, I think I turned into Christopher Walken even. I got so outraged. This kid, he had the brace. Not only did he have the train track braces, I mean, these things were so thick. When he smiled, I think I saw Thomas go by. You know, that British, that blue British, pretty sure pedophile train? He goes by, he's like, hello, how are you today? Beep, beep, I'm off to drive into the tunnel. 
But anyways, this kid had a, not only the train tracks, but a list. He's like, hello, can I help you, sir? And I said, look, elephant man, can we speak English here? I'm, I'm here for something. And I think, you know what? He goes, what would you like to do, sir? I'm like, what? what? What would you like to do, sir? And I think he said, what would you like today, sir? I mean, this guy sounded like uh, someone had just held a, 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 a fucking... Portuguese dolphin underwater and, uh, you know, polar bear did a fart bubble in its face. <laughs> I mean, man. Can I help you, sir? Yes, you can help me, and you know what I'm here for, is what I said to him. He goes, what would you like, sir? And I go, you know what I'm here for, you zit-faced whore. And I know that's not nice, but when I get direct, when I know what I want, I get very direct with people. He goes, excuse me, excuse me, sir? I said, you know what I want, bro, Safiash. Now, uh, why don't you jump on your little fucking uh, magic uh, deep fried toboggan and start sliding over to that deep fryer and get daddy what he wants? Would you like a family pack, sir? No, I don't want a family pack. You know what I want. What would you want, sir? And then I just, here's where the truth came out. I was just, here's where the finally the honesty of KFC came out. No one's ever said this on planet. Are you ready? You might want to write this down. I said, just give me some fucking skin. Excuse me, excuse me, sir? You know what I want. Give me the fucking skin. I want the KFC skin. But we, we, we don't, we don't just sell the skin, sir. I said, dude. Let me get honest with you, okay? You zit-faced, multi-grain, fucking granola bar popping whore. Let me get, let me shove some honesty down your throat like, like a Belgian shoving pate down a goose's neck. You zit-bubbling, volcanic-erupting, sulfur-bubbling pond in the middle of fucking Satan's asshole. <laughs> Let me serve you up a big fucking plate of Cracker Barrel Truth. Here it is. You sure? Nobody's eating your fucking chicken. Excuse me? We're only eating the skin, dipshit. What in the name of sweet Christmas? I said, do you think we're eating your chicken? It's the skin. You you put 11 herbs and spices in the skin, that golden, greasy, outer skin that we eat. You give us a piece of chicken. We eat the skin. When the skin's gone, do you think the rest of the chicken gets a consideration? This poor bird mammal that that was was grown from an egg, it probably lived in squalid conditions and a chicken farm compressed against all its brethren just like almost like like a, like some kind of a horrible turkish prison it had to endure years if not uh, decades in there only to be rejected it's tender white succulent meat maybe a few bites out of it but those were only the result of your hungry teeth stripping the skin from that golden 7-Eleven herbs and spices chicken breast. And this kid was just looking at me. You know, I think there was some uh, fucking lasagna dripping out of his fucking braces. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about, sir? And I'm like, dude, nobody's eating the chicken. This is what happens, okay? We get home. We get to our car, we get under an apple tree, we pull out that golden chicken, that KFC, and we just, we, we strip the skin off of that stuff like a, like a hyena ripping the stripes off a zebra. We just, we're just, we get, you give us a three-pack combo when the skin's gone, when that chicken's balder than Meryl Streep's left ass cheek. We're either throwing it over our shoulder, throwing it to a raccoon, 
feeding it to the trash compactor. And we're on to the next golden piece of skin covered. I mean, no one's eaten this much skin since Hannibal Lecter went to, uh, you know, fucking Mama Cass Elliot's funeral. I mean, we are just, we are skin suckers, man. I don't know if that's a, a new character in Game of Thrones, the skin suckers. But every one of you watching, all of you, guilty, your honor, guilty of just stripping the skin, chewing it, chewing it like a soggy, dirty handkerchief floating around in the bottom of Rebel Wilson's wonton soup. Just chewing the skin the way our ancestors did. And when I say ancestors, I mean the ones we evolved from, the thunder lizards, the dilapidons, the... The Allosaurus. Oh, yes, the dinosaurs. You know they were skin strippers. You know T-Rex would knock down a 70-foot brontosaurus, strip the skin off it, and leave its, its flesh underneath just to boil in the sun. All it wanted was that tender, herb-infused, spice-injected bronto skin. <laughs> And we're no different. We haven't evolved that far, ladies and gentlemen. And so here's the truth, you zit-covered, pimple puss, fucking dartboard-looking creep. (sighs) We aren't eating the chicken. Any chicken we get in our mouth is by accident. We are skin eaten mongrels. So let's cut to the chase. Let's get to the truth, Pimple Mountain, and just give me a bucket of skin, KFC skin. That's all I want. I'm going to go home and eat it. I'm going to go home and rub around on it. I might make a bed sheet out of it and sleep with it and pull it up and in the morning eat my way out of it like a like a snake emerging from its skin. And that's the truth. And this poor kid, I mean, this poor whore, this KFC whore that worked behind the counter, is, is, his pimples started bubbling. They started actually, you ever, you ever see one of those, uh, those um, I don't know what they are, those sulfur hot springs or the, the bubbles are coming up from somewhere under the earth's crust. And this kid got so discombobulated and so confused. It's like like his face was like, if you started playing like Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, it it probably would have been synchronized to this kid's bubbling zits. Us, 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 and them, them. I'll see you on the dark side of the moon. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like I'm partying in a beaver lodge. That, what you just saw there was a little glimpse into a Saturday night at a Perry Sound beaver lodge. Perry Sound, a small northern town in northern Ontario, Canada. And for those of you who love beavers and love hockey, Perry Sound, the birthplace of of number four from the Boston Bruins, the late, great, legendary Bobby Orr. Oh, yes, Bobby Orr. How he worked his way into this podcast, I don't know. But this is the promise we give you here on the Harland Highway, that we told you there are many exit ramps on the highway, and we we are not afraid to go down any of them. So there's the truth about KFC, and that's how I approach KFC now. I just go in and get the skin. It's all I want. It's all I need. And uh, and that's it. There's your story about truth right there. 
Um, and can I move on to another truth? Th- that was a pleasant story. The next story is not so pleasant, and I'm angry. You don't want to get, Mr. McGee, you don't want to get me angry. Oh, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry, Mr. McGee. <gasps> The Incredible Hulk continues. A little nostalgia for you TV buffs. It was an old show back in the 70s called The Incredible Hulk with actor Bill Bixby playing David, Dr. David Bruce Banner. And he would turn into The Incredible Hulk as played by muscle man Lou Ferrigno. And for those of you that don't believe what I just did was real or want to cross-reference what I did, or just want to see the real thing as opposed to an imposter doing it, I urge you to go on YouTube, click in the introduction to the Incredible Hulk TV show from the 70s, and you will hear a line by Bill Bixby. By the way, Bill Bixby from the courtship of Eddie's father fame. That's a whole nother Google search. But you will hear Bill Bixby say, let me clear my throat so I get it right. And remember, this is the guy, this is the meek, mild David Bruce Banner who turns into the giant, you know, wall-smashing Hulk. He goes, he goes, Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. And then he turns green and his eyes go white and he looks like Shrek blew a booger into the back of uh, the Jolly Green Giant's underpants. What is going, come on. What is going on today? Uh, but let's, uh, let's roll the, uh, the teaser for uh, the pissed off segment of the show. Let's do that and we'll get into one of my pissed off rants because I am not happy. Go. Uh, you're starting to piss me off, you little pig of some bitch. You pissed me off. <laughs> Fucking assholes, this fuck, these fucking assholes! The fuck is their problem, man? All right, here we go. Uh, my blood's a little, a uh, little hot right now. I'm not Latin. I'm not angry. I'm not. Well, I am angry, and I think I am Latin. But anyways, um, this is something that happened to me quite recently, and it was unnecessary, but it happened. I was forced into a scenario where I had to tap into this energy or this moment or whatever it is, and it was not pleasant. It was not fun. It was aggravating, and let me tell you what it was, um, but let me preface it a little bit in, in with a little with a little observation. And the observation is this. I think as a society, as, as people, as a, a giant gathering of humans who commute and commune together, um, a friend of mine made this comment the other day. She said, I think as humans, as a society, we're all getting a little angrier. And I thought about that, and that's what kind of led to this story because I told her about it and, and I realized I had had the same thoughts uh, similarly uh, just a few days before, before our discussion happened. And I don't know what, why it's become this way. I think part of it has to do with COVID and, and all the things that went down around it. I think it has to do with politics and how divided people are these days. I think it has to do with how social media has made humans more belligerent, especially in America. It's made them more, uh, I don't know, entitled and, and kind of rude. And there's a whole bunch of elements going on. I don't have the exact answer, but I know that we're all immersed in it. And we're all part of this uh, social phenomenon of people kind of, 
getting angrier and being more insensitive to other people and being impatient and getting rude. And, and I, I hope you try your best not to be in that uh, mindset. And I know I try my best to be very considerate of other people and, and kind and courteous and aware. That's a key word, aware of other people and their space. And uh, here's what happened. I was uh, flying somewhere recently and I had to get a, a second flight. It was one of those flights where I had to stop halfway and, you know, deboard the plane and do it all over again and find a new gate and line up with a whole bunch more people. And uh, it's just, it's, it's beyond aggravating. But I get to my new gate. I'm at a new airport. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm waiting and I look around and at the gate, you've got your standard kind of benches where everyone sits, these long sort of semi uncomfortable benches where people sit right beside each other. And then they also have a person right behind you. So sometimes if they, if they don't know you're there, they forget you're there. They, they lean back, they go, ah, conk. Oh, 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 sorry, man. I was just yawning. I, uh, you know, but, um, I, I approached this uh, gate and I had about, I don't know, half an hour, maybe 40 minutes to before my flight boarded. And I look around and I see all these people compressed together. And, and you know, you, you kind of, wherever you go, you want to carve out your own little private space. And on the other side of the ha- hallway, as people were wandering through the terminal, was this little area that they had carved out for, uh, you know, for whatever, but they had, for some reason, they had like nine or 10 really plush leather, like chairs, you know, like the kind you'd see in your grandfather's house in front of the fireplace or something like that. And, um, and for some reason, they were just lined up down the wall and there was like nine or 10 of them. And, they were accessible for everybody. And I thought, oh, man, I'll, I'll sit there. There's my gate. I'm not around everybody. I can look into my phone, play solitaire. And so I plop down, and uh, I'm playing solitaire with the sound off, being very mindful and respectful of everyone around me. And uh, looking down the aisle of these nice plush leather chairs, which were were spaced apart, maybe, I don't know, that much, a foot and a half. Um, There was two near the end that were uh, being used, but the rest of the whole aisle aisle was empty. All the seats vacant. So I'm sitting there for about five minutes, and as I'm playing in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, this is comfy. This is nice. I got myself a a nice old leather chair and there's my gate and I can see everything and I'll be ready to board in just a minute and I'm relaxed in my big leather. The only thing missing is an old man to sit on. You know, call him granddaddy. Granddaddy, tell me a story. Well, first of all, why are you doing the old man's voice? You're a boy. I don't know. I'm not well. How about this story? Yes, fuck off. Get the fuck off my legs. You're making them numb. Yes, granddaddy. And stop talking like an old man, you little creep. Yes, daddy. Daddy, I'm granddaddy. Sorry. Just all went to hell. So anyways, I'm sitting in this chair. And what the hell is that? A little piece of spittle. Ew. Um, I'm sitting in this chair. Everything's fine. And all of a sudden, like, I see a couple approaching. It's a man and a woman. And the woman's sort of large, which which has nothing to do with it. Just kind of just describing the people. Sort of a large, chubbier person. And the guy is of, you know, regular build. But they're dressed a little bit eccentric, which is fine. It's America. Dress how you want. But as they approached, I looked down. And the guy who was probably, I'd say, late 20s, early 30s, and the woman as well, I looked down and the guy's wearing slippers, okay? But not nice slippers, not fashionable slippers, not, you know, trendy, presentable slippers. These are the type of slippers that when you're at home alone, 
and you're walking around in the garden and you're down in the basement doing laundry and you're out washing your car, like the kind of shitty, dirty, well-worn, like these are your slippers. You've had them for like eight years in your closet and they, you know, they're just, they're just beat up. And you know, no one will ever see them because you only wear them at night. You only wear them when no one's around. They're your, your rest and relaxation slippers, your R&R slippers, rice Um, And so I looked down and this guy's wearing these and right away I was like, you know, I don't want to be judgmental. I like people being creative and expressing themselves, but I got to be honest, gang. When I looked down, it's just like, well, really, dude? Like out in public, getting on an airplane, the slippers were just so gnarly and beat up and they look like the type of thing, I hate to say it, but if you're walking down the street past like a homeless tent or something, I feel like you'd see one laying upside down with a with an old bag of Fritos corn chips on it and the other one being pecked at by a robin looking for worms. You know, I mean, they were just not in tip-top shape, you know? And, you know, you're on an airplane. You know you're going to be in close quarters with other human beings. You know... You know you're you're in a in a tight place, you're in a congested space. And nowadays, you know, traveling and being on airplanes, everyone's riding a little bit hot, right? There's tension in the air and everyone's kind of disgruntled and kind of the last thing they need is is more stimuli to kind of push their buttons. And so here comes this guy, this dude, and he comes shuffling up, because remember. They're these slippers with with the front only. Men wear them. It's the front only. They go over the arch of your, the front of your feet, and then the back's open. So it's like you slip into them, and then there's a cone over your toes and your arch, and then the back's completely open. You're, You're walking on a little flat, you know, whatever it is. So you don't get a good walk out of them. You're not, you're not making a clean stepping motion you know, with that kind of slipper. You're, you're kind of like slipping along, hence the word slippers. You're like, <sighs> yeah, it almost felt like one of the ghosts from A Christmas Carol was making its way to flight 739 to Miami. You know what I mean? It's like, <sighs> do you believe in me or do you not, Ebenezer Scrooge? Do you have a window seat or an aisle seat, Ebenezer Scrooge? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh, God. And I'll be honest, do I have a right to be annoyed? Do I have a right to judge? Probably not. But if I'm being honest, the way I was at KFC, I was fucking annoyed. And I was, I was sort of judgy. I was like, really, dude? Like, you're out in public. You're traveling. You know, it just it was just kind of gnarly. You know what I mean? It, it 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 sort of felt like if I saw a guy wearing a shirt, a white T-shirt, and it had gra- a gravy stain here and ketchup here, and a you know a piece of a, a tomato stuck to his thing, and some relish over here, like literally, sm- the guy smelled like a Subway franchise or something, like isn't there a certain responsibility to have some kind of etiquette towards your fellow humans? I don't know. This is why this is the pissed off segment. So sure enough, this this guy starts shuffling towards me <laughs> and of course starts to head towards these nice cushy seats. Good for him. If he wants one, he deserves one. They're, they're there for everybody, right? Now, as I said earlier, 80% of these seats were empty, okay? Empty, vacant, just like most Red Roofs in as you go across the country. They're vacant because no one wants to lay in a bed with crust, onion rings, centipedes, and band-aids from the legs of crack whores. <laughs> So anyways, guess where Johnny McSlippers decides to plop his fucking ass down? Guess where uh, the ghost of Sigmund Freud decides to sit down? Right beside me. Had the whole row to, 
to separate himself, to have his own personal space. Okay, it's, it was that moment you're at a movie theater and there's 20 people in the theater and one of them comes and sits right in front of you when 90% of the seats are empty. You know that sensation? Great. So now this dude plops right down beside me and now I'm annoyed some more. Now I'm like, okay, he has every right to sit there, but... You know, he could be a mute for all I know. It's not about anything other than, dude, you had you had an opportunity to have your own area. You could, you could have farted, you could have sneezed, you could have scratched your balls, you could have you could have fallen asleep and snored, but you really got to be right beside me and we're in a covid environment where don't you want that separation? Now we're sharing the same air. What if one of us has it? But again, going back to people not thinking, people not being aware, or maybe people not even caring, and some people maybe even being belligerent enough to do it on purpose. To just be like, eh, fuck you, man. I'm going to do whatever I want. Fuck fuck that guy, man. Like, sometimes I wonder if they're they're already pre-programming it before they even make their move. They're just so entitled and so in their own dimension that nobody else matters, right? So here we go. This guy sits down. So I'm a little bit annoyed, but I'm like, okay, I can, I can handle it. And what happens? Within three seconds of sitting down, boom, this comes up, okay? Old uh, Gregory Hines soft shoe McSlippers himself is sitting there and pulls out the old hello box, okay? And uh, guess what he does? Our little, our little friend who decided to sit right beside me did this. He sat, he, he right on the Instagram, right on the, just sitting there, one video to the next. Here we go, just. All right, I gotta watch this one. This is Shakira. I mean, come on. But anyway, just you know. Did you hear this? Right because I was nice and quiet in the airport listening, listening to the announcements, you know. Listening to those those whimsical those whimsical and you know those wonderful town we got a flight change. We can do the weather conditions. We're, gate five is now down at twenty two oh five. Uh, Los Angeles to uh, Sacramento will be going down to gate twenty five. You know, did you that's all you want to hear? Or this one, ladies and gentlemen, please watch your bags. If a bag around you is unknown to you, we will come and arrest you and shoot you outside in the taxi parking area. If you happen to leave your bag or find it on, please call the authorities so that we can press the nuclear button and destroy planet Earth. But now, now I got this. Right beside me. That's appropriate. Right? So now I got this guy invading my space. No fucking concern for anyone around him. Not just me, but anyone else around him. Because there were other people in the area. There was no one sitting beside him on the other side. And so I'm not the type of guy that just sits there and lets that kind of stuff roll. So I was about to turn to him and go, dude, really? Like, I'm right beside you. I'm, I'm nine inches away from you. Okay? I'm the distance of a well-endowed man's erection away from you. Okay, bro? Is there a way you can uh, not do that or put some ear pods in or move down to one of the many empty seats uh, 12 feet away? That's what I was geared up to say. And then this is where I got a little bit disturbed because I thought to myself, am I playing into this social anger that exists? Am I playing into the narrative of disrespecting other people am i am i getting consumed by this uh, this wave of uh not respecting other people's spaces am i becoming part of the problem 
And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to fight fire with fire. I'm going to give this guy a taste of his own medicine. So here's what I did. Yeah, this is what I did. As I told you, I was already playing solitaire. And so what I did is I undid the sound and I put my volume up full blast. And this is what he was dealing with, okay? I started, I, I bring up a new game. I got the, the thing clicking. I got the cards flapping. You know, it sounds like a, a hummingbird flew into, a, into you know, uh, to Barry Manilow's uh, bedroom window, right? And I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm moving the cards around and I'm, I'm flapping and I'm doing this and I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just really loud, full volume. And I knew the guy could hear it. I'm just like doing, you know, everything, you know, and you get it, you get it. And it felt really good. It felt really good, but it also felt horrible. It felt really good that I, instead of just turning and reasoning with this guy, I'm thinking, why am I reasoning with a guy that's so deaf, dumb, and blind to the environment we're in? What point is there to, to even try to negotiate or instill any type of knowledge into this person? They clearly don't care. They don't get it. Why am I going to waste my energy and now be in a confrontational situation with someone that doesn't give a flying or is too dumb to, to uh, perceive what's around him? So I just say, you know what? Why don't you just do exactly what he's doing? Mirror it. So here I am making all this noise, and I did it for about five minutes. And I'm thinking, I wonder if he'll say anything. I wonder if he'll look up. I wonder if he'll say, and, and he didn't. And that disturbed me even more because I didn't want to be this guy. I didn't want to be Johnny Ace of Spades. I didn't want to be the Queen of Hearts McGinty. I didn't want to be the Three of Diamonds O'Reilly guy. I just wanted my peace and quiet, but this guy didn't even look up. He just kept looking at his YouTube videos and his Instagrams. And then another part of me felt really, really good for doing it. You know, for, for just saying, you know what? Fuck you. You, you want to be a douche? I'll be a douche right back at you. This is what it sounds like. And I was hoping maybe, I didn't want to do it just to be a douche. I was hoping maybe it would make him become aware and go, oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, did, oh, maybe I, and, and maybe turn it down or, you know what, there's an empty seat down there. You know, I thought maybe take his own initiative maybe to take a clue. Uh, take a hint there, Nancy Drew. Take a, solve the mystery there, Hardy boy. Okay. Uh, get, uh, follow up on some leads there, Inspector Clouseau. Uh, Solve the caper there, Sherlock Holmes. But no, nope, just keep blind and just ignorant to the whole thing. So what did I do? I finally got up. I'm like, checkmate, you win. I don't want to deal with it. I got up and I walked down the hall and I sat beside an old man with a cane, a lovely old man with a cane and his elderly wife and their grandchildren and their wife and you could tell it was their 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 uh, son and, and 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 daughter and i sat down with them they were nice and quiet and friendly and i just put on youtube and watched fucking african fucking animal videos where lions were ripping the shit out no no i didn't no i didn't i did not i did not go there i did not go there girlfriend I did not go there, girlfriend. Um, but where I did go is here um, to the end of the podcast. Oh, my God. It's just been one crazy rant after another. I'm, I'm out of breath. I'm out of time. I got to get to an airport and annoy somebody. But uh, I want to remind you, uh, don't forget, if you're loving the podcast, please invite your friends, tell your friends. Uh, make sure you go on uh, down below on the, uh, on the uh, YouTube page, leave a comment, ask a question, make a remark, whatever you want to do. Love to see your comments. 
Um, also, click the little bell here uh, right beside the subscribe button so that uh, whenever something new comes up from yours truly, you get notified. And most important of all, please subscribe to the Harland Highway. There's a little button. I think it's on this side or that side or maybe it's in my forehead. But please subscribe. Encourage your friends to subscribe. We want to grow the podcast so we can do more great things with the podcast. And um, I would be very appreciative and thankful for that uh, endeavor. Um And also, don't forget, if you want more bonus material from the Harland Highway, please join my Patreon page. Patreon is a digital platform where uh, I put exclusive material that is bonus material uh, for this podcast. And also, on many occasions, I post this podcast three or four days before the rest of you get it on YouTube. So if you're one of those uh, people who like an early look at stuff, uh, get to my Patreon page, sign up. If you don't like it, you can jump off. Guess how much it is a month? $5. So you could go on for a month for $5. You know, I don't like it. And for less than a Burger King Whopper with fries and a massage, you can get off. But I, I think you'll like it. I hope you stay there. Um And what else can I tell you? Don't forget to check out Cameo, cameo cameo.com. If you want a personal video from me to you or someone uh, you know or love, uh, you can go to Cameo and then tell me what you want and I can uh, improvise and uh, leave a very personal message for you or a friend. Trust me, I've actually done it with other actors and uh, I wouldn't be endorsing it unless I loved it. I had a favorite actor, one of the actors from the show Lost, and I saw him on there, and I got him to do a Christmas video for my cousin because uh, this is an actor that was in a a cult horror movie that we loved when we were younger called The Stepfather. And this guy went on and actually did some lines from The Stepfather. We were over the moon, and I was sort of resisting getting on Cameo, and when, when I saw how much fun and how much joy that brought us, I decided to jump on Cameo, and so now I leave um, I leave uh, voice messages for people and uh, lines from my movies and things like that. So uh, hopefully you guys will uh, dig it, and um, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um, what else? I think that's it for today. Um, hope you had a fun time. Uh, please come back and uh, we'll do some more of this real soon. Got some interesting guests coming up on the podcast. I think you'll enjoy. So uh, thank you all. And uh, until next time, this is me, Harlan Williams, the Harlan Highway Podcast saying chicken chow mein, baby. <laughs>